Frequently, we only pay attention to kind of standard stateroom cabins, the, the standard veranda on newer ships, or the over-the-top suites that, for many of us, are just not in our budgets. Uh, Virgin Voyages has kind of a neat in-between that I want to show you today, and that's what they call an XL Sea Terrace. This is a sea terrace, so a veranda room, has a hammock. I know a lot of you wonder about that with Virgin. Um, but it's got some more space, a much larger and different restroom configuration, and generally a different layout. This one is especially different than some other videos you've seen, though, because just a few months ago, even though Virgin Voyages ships are all brand new, they actually went through the staterooms and added some wood accents and additional storage options, and they've done that in this room that we're going to see today. If you're interested in sailing with Virgin Voyages or on any other line to any other place, do us a favor, check out our sponsors down below. The folks at Touring Plans help us travel and they will help you travel smarter as well. Now, on to this tour of room 12334Z, an XLC Terrace on Virgin Voyages Scarlet Lady. This is room 12334Z, as in Z, that means it's on the starboard side. It's an XL Sea Terrace, so it's not a suite, but it's a larger Sea Terrace stateroom. Sea Terrace is what Virgin Voyages calls their, uh, their balcony staterooms. As is tradition, if you've watched any of the, ship, uh, the uh, cabin tours on Cruise Habit, it's a dirty cabin tour. It's actually the last night of the cruise. I uh, tried to clean up a little bit, but, but you'll see. Plenty of space. Now, what makes this an XL, before we even go any further, is simply that it, uh, it is larger and has a slightly different layout, but the big thing is a much larger bathroom. This is the view from standing over by the, the balcony, and the purple curtain that you see there, that is the closet. Uh, if this was a regular sea terrace room, the closet would be right next to the front door. The beds are in what I would call the standard configuration. If you do want them to be separate, if you want twins, or if you want to use the seabed configuration, this half here swings out. Your stateroom attendant will take care of it and turns this into a sofa of sorts and then a single bed there. You can either use that again for two beds or if you just want to have it a different layout during the day. Initially, they did that each day, but people didn't really care and it took some time. But if you ask your stateroom attendant, they will happily change the configuration for you. Some people have said that these rooms don't have enough storage. I find that, especially for a five-night cruise, there's plenty. I do agree, though, that it's not well divided up. There, there are a couple pain points there, but they've made some changes recently that made it a little bit better, including these drawers right here. Previously, there were some cubbies here, um, but not as many as there now are drawers. That helps keep you organized. A big thing that I noticed, the safe here is actually large enough. You can put a couple laptops in there. I keep... Um, in addition to documents and extra phones, I keep a 14-inch MacBook Pro in a large case and a 13-inch MacBook Pro in a large case. Pretty handy. The shelf up there is very sturdy. Plenty of room to hang things. They have nice sturdy hangers there for you. And we tend to keep clothes down there. A beautiful but maybe weak spot in these rooms is the vanity. Now, keep in mind, as cluttered as this is, that's an entire two-monitor workstation with ergonomic keyboard, noise-canceling headphones. There's a lot of stuff over there. Um, I did try and stack it a little bit to keep things out of the way. The water, I like this. Uh, they'll ask you, when you first meet your stateroom attendant, they'll, uh, they'll introduce themselves on the first day. There's actually two of them. They'll ask you if you want still or sparkling or one of each. We always get an extra bottle just because we like to make sure, especially in the evening, that there's plenty of water. Phone and, of course, a light there. And then you've got, that opens to a mini fridge. It's not a mini bar, there's nothing in it by default, but you can always grab some stuff, especially since on Virgin, uh, soda and other stuff like that is complimentary. Though there are uh, no or very few single use containers. There's a little stool that comes out, some cubbies for additional storage there. We have several things just thrown in there, a lot of outlets in these rooms. Uh, again, I know it's a bit of a mess, but there are two US outlets there, an EU outlet and two USBs. Um, the one of the USBs is plugged into this wireless charger, which charges your tablet. Your tablet can be used for a lot of different things. Controls the lights and the thermostat. You can go um, 
into this mode. And actually there's, there's like mood lighting and stuff like that. That's kind of interesting uh, because the lights in the room can change color. In fact, let's go into get it on mode. And you'll see that closes the curtains. I don't know if you guys heard that, uh, can hear the TV, the music on the TV that comes on. Uh, so pretty neat lighting effects. These individual lights are controlled by these switches and not by the tablet. So you have some reading lights all along there and this padded headboard. Let me get the lights back to a uh, normal kind of situation here. All right, back with the lights, normal. You also have switches to control the room right over here next to the bed. And uh, that way you don't have to have the tablet. But the tablet, what I do is at the end of each night, I just bring the tablet with me so that if I wake up in the middle of the night, I'm hot or cold or need anything, I can just tap it on that tablet. You can also control the TV from that tablet and other things. You can use the app to do some of those things, including request uh, turn down service uh, to your room or get ship each, eats, which is their room service uh, offering that is actually fantastic. And I have an article all about that over on cruisehabit.com. Importantly, not only is there enough room on the bed to sleep, but there's enough room under the bed for your suitcases and a pair of sandals there. There are also some drawers that pull out. One of them I think has extra linens on there. The other I believe is empty. But again, we find there's actually an okay amount of storage. It's just the lack of storage at the vanity that is, uh, that's a little annoying because there aren't drawers or anything like that, but we make it work. Nice accent lighting around the mirror there. Recently, Virgin redid all the rooms, which is wild for brand new line, brand new ships. They added these wood accents here, as well as up there where the accent lighting is. And over there on the mini fridge. I like it, makes things feel a little less cold. You do have this table right here, which is great. It'll slide under the bed if you want to have breakfast in bed, or I use it. Sometimes I'll sit there and use that as a little mini workstation if Larissa's working over here. Full length mirror uh, when you walk in and some place to hang. Well, there's towels, jackets, or I tend to hang bags there to keep them out of the way. Opening the curtains with a push of a button, or you can do it on the tablet. You see that on the other side of the bed are another set of switches, as well as uh, another outlet and two more USBs. Same configuration over there where that laptop is plugged into. So no shortage of places to charge stuff. I wish there were USB-C outlets, but that's really a minor complaint. A pretty great charging situation. Something that gets a lot of attention are these beautiful curtains. Now, I actually really like the kind of iridescent look on certain things here, but on the sea terrace. This is where I go, oh wow, I should have taken the bathing suit that I was drying off of the hammock before doing this tour. Good move, Billy. Now free of the bathing suit that was drying there, you see here on the uh, sea terrace, you've got two chairs and what they refer to as a champagne table. And it's actually decent size. It's always tell, hard to tell in these videos unless you use such a wide lens that then you can't tell if it's larger than it seems. But I like, everyone likes these hammocks. It seemed gimmicky, but it really is pretty great. Laying out here, especially on a sea day, it's fantastic. I'm now really good at laying in this too. The first time I had a little trouble, gotta be honest with you. You should know that XLC terraces are mostly located all the way forward. There might be a couple all the way aft though. I believe so on certain decks. So you see here, there is uh, an obstruction over us and then the uh, bridge wing is right there. A couple of them further back, a little more private. And then as soon as you get past here, it actually curves around toward the front of the ship. You may have read that some folks with an XLC terrace didn't have a hammock. And that applies just to the couple that are all the way forward. And I don't know the state right now. Nope, can't see over. Maybe if I stand on the table, what could go wrong there? I see one there. Um, but the ones that were all the way forward did not have hammocks. Um, that is something I actually talked to Virgin about, and they said they're actively correcting that they're mounting hammocks on those couples. So if, unless you're um, booking, you know, we're filming this in uh, early May, unless you're on board next week or something, I wouldn't sweat that too much. It sounds like they're resolving that. 
back toward the entrance of the room. Oh, I actually put electrical tape here because I don't like LEDs bothering me at night. And to be honest, there are quite a few in this room. I don't know that most people would even notice. This is the thermostat over here, bathroom light, um, main room lights, and this guy right here. Now, if you're in a non-XLC terrace, it's kind of in the closet when you first walk in, wrap around to the right, it's a little funky. But this is for do not disturb. Oops, there we go. And this is if you want service, you can touch that. You can also do this from the app. When you do it in the app, it doesn't change this or the light outside that indicates this, um, but it does let the staff know what you want. And what's neat is you have the ability to not just press, yeah, I want my room turned over, but I want the room cleaned, or I just need more towels, or you know, whatever it is that you need, a maintenance issue you can even describe. Now, this is the part that's really different in the XL C Terrace room, and that's the bathroom. Notice there's no door here. This is what some people will not love. Depends, different strokes. Um, Nice, really sizable sink here, especially compared to the regular sea terrace. Two stations for soap and glasses and whatever, toiletries. They have these cool makeup towels. I like that. Big countertop, storage underneath for whatever you need. And then you have two doors over here. One of these doors leads to a shower and the other to the water closet. This is where Virgin wins the shower game, in my opinion. Excellent water pressure and temperature control. And you have the wand over here that is of great quality, as well as this uh, rain shower kind of head that you can adjust. I recommend adjusting it out that way when you first turn it on so you don't get a very cold surprise for those first couple seconds. And another one of these with the included uh, toiletries. They also give you bar soap. We use our own toiletries. In the water closet, not a lot to report here. It's a toilet. You guys have seen toilets, right? But if you've never been on a ship, you have no idea the sound it's going to make when it flushes. And that's it. Did you notice that I was wearing an awesome cat shirt the entire time? Bet you didn't. We just got back from Bimini, the, uh, the beach club at Bimini, on the last day of the sailing. Make sure you check out the daily vlog from this cruise, and we've got lots more Virgin Voyages content available for you. And uh, depending on when you're watching this, maybe you can come join us on July 3rd for Virgin Voyages groupcruise.com. We'd love to sail with you. Reach out with any questions. Make sure to click like, subscribe, and click the little bell so you're alerted each time we post a new video. I look forward to talking ship with you again real soon.